demo on making precise selections using channels. I've given you files and um, in that file set I've given you both a web address of this and also a PDF of it. Not done by me, but done by somebody else. It goes into great detail. I'm just going to do the demo for you. So in order to do this, I've opened up an image called Cuba Vinales Horse Portrait DNG. And I've also nested my layers panel with the channels panel. You're going to need this. You're going to need this. And I've also got history and actions here. We won't use actions just now. So that's what it'll look like when it opens up. I'm just going to close the file now. And now I'll open it the way you would. So I'm just going to double click DNG. It's going to open up in Camera Raw. And all you need to do is open the image. You don't have to hold down the Shift key and open it as an object. Just open image. And there it is. And the purpose of this is to use the power of the RGB channels to automatically create the ideal mask just for the sky, leaving the foliage and the horse unmasked. And that's the purpose of channels. So when you go to your channels panel, you should see them like this. You'll see the composite RGB here, and then the individual red, green, and blue channels. And as you go through red, green, and blue channels on any color image, you'll note that there's usually one channel that's better at showing you a contrast between your background and your foreground than others. And it does, of course, depend on the colors in the image. Now, if your channels happen to be showing up in red, in green, and in blue, that's because your preferences for the interface of Photoshop have this checked off. See how that shows red, green, and blue? So you don't want that checked off. Otherwise, this will be much more difficult to do. There we are. So by looking at the channels individually, I can see that the blue channel offers me the best contrast or the best difference between the horse and its foliage and its surroundings than the sky. So that's the one I'm going to use. And the way we use it is I just simply, you know, make sure that your panel is, is um, you know, long enough here so you can see all the channels because you're going to make a couple of new ones. So let's bring this down to at least that length. And I'm going to take this blue channel and copy it so that I can mess around with it. I'm just going to copy it by dragging it onto the new channel icon. And now it's just called blue copy. That's really all you need to do. Now, what we're going to do to this channel is use curves or levels to push the tones to black, where they're gray now, and to white, where the sky is. So the best way to do that is while remaining with this channel selected, all you do is invoke those adjustments. And they can be done here under Image, Adjustments, and you can get levels or you can get curves. I'm used to using curves, but I'll use levels here just to show you how it works. All right, so this is a histogram of this image. You don't need to worry about it. As long as this channel is shown here, you've done everything correct. And I'm just going to push the tones in this channel by compressing, I'm literally compressing the histogram into a much shorter space. And as I use the middle slider, I'm also making some choices here. So the objective is to push this to a point where it starts to make almost all of the tones in the sky disappear. If you push it too far, it'll give you a very gritty edge, especially along areas where there's hair or foliage. So I'm just going to enlarge this with Command Plus so we can see what we're doing and hold down the space bar to move the image around. And now I can see the tones in the image. And you don't have to worry about getting them perfectly separated because we're going to use dodge and burn or black and white brushes to fix it. And it's very, very quick, so don't worry about that. So again, I'm going to idealize this by moving the shadows in. And I don't want to do it to the point where they're touching because it'll completely make the image unworkable. So that looks great. All these areas of foliage, foliage and horse are black, and the sky is nearly white. And uh, make sure things are pretty even here. I like to have a little space between these. It works best. Now, if you do this with curves instead of levels, you'll have even a little bit more control. But this is a pretty quick way to show it to you. I'm going to hit OK. 
and what I've done is I've turned this channel into a high contrast channel and now all I have to do is turn the areas of this that I'm not concerned about black. The best way to do this because of the shape of this area is I'm going to grab the rectangular marquee. I'm just going to drag a nice big rectangle here and I'm going to hit the delete key or you can just go to edit fill with black. If I hit the delete key I make sure that this says black and now it fills with black. I'm going to use command D to drop that selection and I can come in here and take this dodge and burn and use burn to darken areas that I don't want to have any gray tones. The easiest way to do that is I can actually go to highlights which is kind of counterintuitive because I'm actually burning the lightest pixels so I'm choosing highlights because that's where they live and bring the exposure up all the way and now when I use dodge and burn it's going to basically try to eliminate any gray tones Oops, I went over. I'm going to just be a little bit more careful here and use a smaller brush. And you can see that I'm kind of burning that. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm basically burning these white areas. Now you can do this with a brush just as well. However, when I'm back in the sky, I would take the dodge. And now these are really light tones, so they'll burn. I mean, they'll dodge really, really well. And again, I'm, I'm staying in highlights, so I'm going to bring the exposure all the way. I'm just going to cook these things and just completely paint them out. Now, you can, of course, use a white brush, but the advantage of using dodge is if you set the pressure or exposure lower, then you can actually come in here and very, very subtly work without having to worry about hitting any of the black areas that contain plant material here. So in a sense, the dodge brush is only looking at highlights and it's exposing these highlights just a minor percentage. So I can kind of be sloppy here and go around. Whereas if you use a brush, you have to be much more accurate. So there I am. And if I see any areas here that are still a little gray, I'll go back to burn. And I'm going to set this actually to shadows. And as you can see, if I do it carefully, if I overdo it, I'll get a gritty edge. And again, you can take a brush, make sure that black is your foreground color, and just go in as long as your opacity is up. Notice how I change the opacity by just scrubbing the word opacity way faster than using the drop down menu. So I'm just going to go in here and fix this. I'm not going to worry about every single dot here because I want to show you this video quickly. All right. There, I've done a pretty good job isolating all the parts of this that I don't care about. Now what I have is a finished, oops, I have a finished um, separation between the sky and the horse, and that's all I needed to do. So now I go back to RGB, and if I want to load that selection, then all I need to do is Command or Control on a PC, click it, right on the icon for that channel and it loads the selection of all the white areas that were in this channel and if I turn the channel on you'll see the mask preview of those areas as long as those marching ants or selection edges are active I can now go to the layers panel and I can make a mask and especially if I note that whatever is selected here, which is the sky. If I mask by clicking the mask icon, look what's going to happen. It sometimes goes the opposite way. So I'm going to Command Z that, and I'm going to hold down the option this time. And now it masks properly. But if you end up with the opposite of what you want, you can just use Command I to invert black to white in the mask. So what's that? what, what that's done is it's effectively knocked out the background and yes, there's some little things here that I didn't take too much time to worry about, such as the barbed wire. But again, because this is a mask, we can always double click it and get back into Refine Edge and play with it if we really need to. So there's always that opportunity to come in and mess around with this a little bit here. But what we just accomplished was to make a pretty complex mask that really would have been difficult to make any other way. And 
of course this is a horse standing in front of a sky, but yours may be completely different, and you'll just have to judge whether or not using channels to create masks is effective for you. And the way to do that is just simply open up your art, your image, and just click through the channels individually. Whoops. I have to make sure that I'm on the actual layer and not on its channel to do that. And shut off RGB. There we go. Sometimes it works when you click it. Sometimes it's a little funky. So there it is. Look at the RGB channels, and usually one of them will help you start that mask. And that's it. Thank you very much, and good luck.